Good morning. I'm Jim Bradley from the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center. We're going to talk about rotator cuff repair and this new concept called the compression speed bridge. We have a patient with left shoulder pain, and he's 64-year-old right-hand dominant male weightlifter for many years with several years of shoulder pain. He acutely worsened this over six weeks. His resting pain, 5 to 6 out of 10, increases to 10 out of 10 with any kind of weightlifting activity. And his pain increases uh, with uh, lifting, overhead activity specifically, and cross-body motions when he's getting dressed. His range of motion, he's got 120 degrees of overhead uh, forward flexion. He's got 80 of external rotation, and he's got internal rotation to the iliac crest. His abduction is 120, his strength is 4 out of 5 supraspinatus and infraspinatus and subscapularis. He's got positive O'Brien's, Hawkins, empty cam maneuvers, and he's tender uh, over his bicipital groove. Uh, the imaging is really not that impressive. We thought we had a rotator cuff tear. It's there, but it's, we didn't think it was... Uh, that significant. However, we're gonna talk about what we did do, this new technique called the compression speed bridge. Here actually is the tear when we get in there. It's kind of a T-shaped tear. It's, it's across the uh, greater tuberosity and then there's a split into the supraspinatus. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna repair the T part of it so that we can make it now a big U. So we're, we're repairing the top part, which is right there. Uh, we use a scorpion, Pass it four times, two different fiber wires. One's uh, going to be a white tiger wire, and the other's going to be a blue one, so we don't get them mixed up. Once we tie this uh, arthroscopically and get it back to, a, as you can see, a U, now we're going to do the compression speed bridge. So this is the most important thing of the construct. We use knotless swivel locks. We use a blue, uh, blue fiber tape one in the front and a tiger wire white one in the back with the locking construct. It's important to get right at the level of the humeral head where the beginning of the footprint is. Another trick is to see I'm lifting it, lifting up with my uh, probe. So if you can't see exactly where you want to go through your center portal, you just lift it up so you can see exactly where to set those down. And you can see I'm right on the edge of the cartilage and that's very important. The construct then looks like this again, like we spoke before. You have to make individual passes of each one. So number one, you're gonna take all the mechanism and one of the fiber tapes out the front. And I use collagen coated fiber tapes, by the way, all the time. Then you're gonna take number two individually with a scorpion and make that a little more medial in the construct and take number three, which is just a fiber tape. And we're gonna make that more medially. And then we're finally gonna take all four with a fiber link out the back. So you have four separate passes. One and four have the entire mechanism and one fiber tape. Two and three just have uh, an individual fiber tape at the junction of the, the muscle tendon junction of the rotator cuff. It looks like this when you do it. And obviously we're using a, to pass the, the front and the back, we used to have, we have to use an unloaded fiber link to pull everything through. After this is complete, this is the, the finished repair. You can see one and four are shorter than two and three. And once again, the most important thing in my mind are the cables. This, so an anterior and the posterior cable, I use links with to make sure that we have the anterior and posterior cable down. Arthroscopically, it looks like this. Passing. It's meticulous. You gotta be very sure that your, your twos and threes are more medial. So here it is again. I'm tensioning them. I tension all three of them. And then what I'll do is I'll put it in. The final construct looks like this, where you have anterior, posterior cable repair, you have independent passes of all the fiber tapes, and then you have the knotless mechanism over the top, pushing the, uh, the medial compression on the rotator cuff repair. The final construct looks like this, and then we're gonna use the anterior loop suture, and we're just gonna tension it down. Now, the important thing at the end of this is, you wanna use a knot pusher to really push it down and get some compression. And the, the final construct, you're gonna be very satisfied. You simply cut it, and then you rotate the arm through range of motion. And it's been, it's been very advantageous in my hands, especially for people with poor tissue. I'm using this on almost everybody, but poor tissue, it, it seems to grab the cuff and set it down much, much better. Thank you very much.